when you're doing VFX and doing it in post is you've got these dots to work off. Yeah. But you can literally look in the mirror and go, that's it, that's yeah. who I am. So this is an amazing mixture of a war film and, without spoiling anything, a horror film. And Julius, I just wanted to ask, you know, when you're trying to find the right tone, was there a sequence for you that was the thing that made you in your mind go, yeah, this is working, I think we got this, I know where we need to go with it? Yeah, look, I was always uh, interested in trying to get the emotion and the action, um, you know, balancing that. And I, I thought the uh, the opening sequence um, that we start off um, with these paratroopers as they're getting dropped behind enemy lines on D-Day, uh, Operation Overlord, um, really set the tone for um, what we were going to experience, you know, this really intense ride. And at its heart, there's, um, you know, there's a, a lot of char great characters and and who we invest in and who we end up by loving. And, you know, JJ um, always talks about um, getting the audience to lean in. Mm -hmm. And so when, so so I think the way to do that is um, you've got to love love the characters. You gotta be behind them. And so I think, you know, from the get go we sort of get behind these guys and um, just before they're about to get dropped into hell. Yeah, well, all right, that's a good segue for Peter, uh, for your character, because we don't love your character. <laughs> that much. <laughs> that much. But uh, you know, when you're playing a Nazi character, it's so easy to go to extremes, but there are a lot of shades to your character. So what were the conversations between you about how much to dial into him when we first meet him so that there's a place for him to go as the movie goes on? It's, it's, it, Jules and I, we discussed it a lot because there's, there's nothing more simple and idiotic as an actor to go to, to do something too much. Mm -hmm. And, and um, the, the basics were there for us. We, we, could, have, we could have done 110. Yeah. So we kind of took a little bit away and added a little bit. You know, it's like making a dish or yeah. something. And, and I think we actually placed it where it's, it's an homage to the cliche of an evil Nazi man, yeah. but it's also its own in, in a weird sense of way. Yeah. <coughs> and it's like two levels of horror with him. <coughs> we definitely Sorry. get, no, we get a level of simmering fear and yeah. then more overt as it goes along, which is great. It's, it's, it creates a whole different spectrum for him. But for me, it was very important because we have a scene in the middle of the film where there's actually an American soldier doing something terrible. He's doing something that you have never seen American soldiers do in movies. He's torturing a guy. And, and at that scene, it's like I almost felt a little bit of sympathy for, for Waffner, my guy, but only for a split second. <laughs> So tell me, um, for you guys, I wanted to talk about the prosthetics versus, you know, CGI version, and yet really applies to Wagner's character. Mm -hmm. So tell me about uh, what you put him through, yeah. and ultimately your choices for doing that. Yeah, we wanted to uh, have a very in-camera, practical <coughs> feeling in this movie. We wanted to make it as visceral for the audience as possible, and you know. Um, yeah, so keeping it as analog as possible was, uh, was something that I really wanted to do. So prosthetics was a big part of it. You know, we put Pilu through the ringer. He, has, he had to sit in a chair for five hours every day. He was very patient. Uh, was, very he, unhappy. He, he, <laughs> he, he, ne he never lost it. He was like, no. uh, you, you, know, you can imagine, you, can, you can't itch, you can't touch you can't, it. You can't yeah. touch yourself and you're completely covered in this goo or whatever it's called. And it's frustrating and it's irritating and it's absolutely perfect because you need it. And I think Julius kept insisting on everything being uh, not CGI, but what do you call it? Tactile. Tactile, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, that helps a lot. It, it, for, for me, it's all, it's all very selfish. Yeah, I'm a, a, a performance director at heart, and you know, I just want to give the actor as many tools as I can to, to help them with their performance. And, and one of the, the things that um, when you're doing VFX and doing it in post is you've got these dots to work off. Yeah. But he can literally look in the mirror and go, that's it, that's yeah. who I am. And, yeah. and, and, I, and it gives more to the actors. You, it gives you 10% more because you, it's a mask. Yeah. It's something you put on and you're not so vain about it. You, know? you, you look like shit, but you're not so vain. And that's a good thing because if you give a little bit more, the reaction you're getting from your colleagues is sometimes a little bit better. Yeah. And we would actually hide me so when I revealed it, they hadn't seen it. So their reaction would be based on something real.